Hello everyone, Kingslayer here, and today I'm going to be starting on my new series of Skyrim mods. I really love Skyrim, both its vanilla version and its modded version. It's just a really great game. If you don't have it, you should. For either the PC or a console, but honestly, the PC will give you a lot more content to work with. Well, anyway, to start out today, I'm going to be, uh, well, basically doing what the title of the video said. Uh, showing you how to become a samurai in Skyrim. I have three mods for you today that I'm going to be showing you. Two of them are uh, mo armor and uh, weapon mods, and one of them is the house that I'm standing in front of. The house is called the Japan Lodge. It is located uh, just basically a, a stone's throw from Riverwood. Uh, you just get walk along this path here, ride a horse, and you'll be right there in no time. It uh, The house does not cost any money. It's just right here, ready for you when you get here. Now the first thing about this house, it's really aesthetically detailed and the author did a lot of good work on it. First off we have this bridge over the waterfall, really nice. Really gets you in the mood of what's to come. Also the main entranceway, very Japanese. This is where your horse spawns, if you have a horse, it'll spawn there. Go up the stairs here. Here we have the main porch area for your house. Nice view. Then as we go inside the main house we have your living room area. Very nicely decorated. Has some nice uh, Japanese art hung from the walls. Also has uh, different butterflies and things in jars. Really nice uh, non-vanilla furniture. Really adds to the style of the house. Then we have the uh, the downstairs bedroom here, also very nice, well decorated. I think the only thing that's not modded in here is this bed, that's the only texture I've seen before. Then also downstairs we have the uh, alchemy lab, along with this chest right here, stores all your soul gems. It gives you a lot of soul gems, so you, you won't run out of soul gems that easily. If Indigo would move, I'll show you the kitchen area. Really nice kitchen area. Also, uh, in all the chairs and stuff, you sit cross-legged, so you're going to need a mod for the cross-legged to work correctly, otherwise you're going to see yourself when you sit down. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a mod installed for that, but I'm sure you can find one on Skyrim Nexus or Steam. Also the house, there are no load screens, so it's, you know, connected to the outside world, so you can view out all the windows, which is a nice touch. Uh, depending upon your PC, it might lag a bit because of the water and everything not being, basically everything being loaded at once, there might be some load screens, but other than that, it's really, really awesome. Then we'll move to the upstairs of the house. Upstairs in this main little area here we have some storage and uh, shrines to the different gods of Skyrim. Basically all the shrines are in this house so you won't have to go anywhere to get your you know, Pacific bless blessing you need for each adventure. You have them all right here. And then we have the main bedroom area. Lots of storage, well main upstairs bedroom area. Lots of storage involved in this, really nice. Then we have the kids bedroom, or uh, shrines to the different gods. Then we have the bath area, uh, it's also por uh, potion storage. So if you like brewing potions or whatever, there's plenty of room to store it in here. Also, all the doors are sliding, sliding glass. Another really cool feature that adds to the immersion. Then we have the upstairs reading room slash uh, enchantment room with your arcane enchanter and your bookshelf with a lot of uh, books from Skyrim. 
I'm pretty sure that's not all the books from Skyrim because there's a lot of books. But a, a good amount's up here. Then we have your main house balcony area. Really nice if you want to, you know, sit and relax after a hard day of battling. Just sit and enjoy yourself, have some mead. Then we'll continue on here, obviously the porch area, picnic table. Then we have uh, the outdoor cooking slash basically fire pit area, some more picnic tables, well a picnic table, and uh, wood chopping block here. Then we'll go into the trophy uh, house area. This is where you can uh, basically uh, display your armor and uh, weapons. Using this right here, you can uh, give the mannequin uh, weapons and armor and things. Change its appearance from uh, regular to wooden. If, it, if it's not in the wooden state, it will be a copy of your character displayed as the mannequin. Bring to life, which is a feature I already have. Uh, it just brings the mannequin to life and makes it move. Pretty cool. Rotate. Rotates the mannequin. Resets the position to the position, the, the default position. And deactivate, which gives you back your armor. And deactivates the mannequin. So, once again, really cool. Then you got your hot tub. Obviously, you need a hot tub. You, you need a hot tub because you know, awesome house. Sit and melt your troubles away, and etc. Then we have a few uh, flowers and decorations over here. Another giant statue. You can't have too many giant statues. Got to have giant statues, especially in Skyrim. Need statues. Then you got your picnic area. picnic area slash outdoor eating area I guess got your containers of mead because you obviously need mead and uh, also all these NPCs uh, right here are not included with the actual mod I just spawned them because they go with uh, they go with the aesthetic of the home and really bring it to life uh, you basically have to fill this this house with your own NPCs because otherwise it doesn't have any Then we have the downstairs meditation slash garden area, complete with butterflies and bees and etc. Lots of flowers and mushrooms and things. Meditation room. Then as we go down here, we have the main forge area got your blacksmith forge and uh, your workbench and your smelter and your grindstone which is really convenient so you don't have to go anywhere to make armor and weapons it's all just right here and then you have your chest which is already filled with every kind of ingot imaginable and your leather and now for the dojo your dojo is your standard, you know, dojo. It has a nice little area for practice fighting or whatever. You can spawn some NPCs in here and just, you know, practice your samurai skills. Also a nice view of white run out the window. Then over here we have the, uh, well, basically another picnic area out here some more decorative flowers nice nice rock wall right here too really adds to the aesthetics another outdoor balcony area where you can sit and relax and drink whatever he's drinking right now then we have the guest house 
The guest house is just basically an area for your NPCs or your companions or whatever you want to put in here. Your armored trolls. I, I don't suggest putting armored trolls in here. That'd probably be pretty bad to clean up. Well, yeah, pretty cool the guest house. <clears throat> now I'll show you all of the armor and weapons that uh, the two other mods add to the game. Do -do -do. Well, first off, I'll show you the armor I have on personally. Which is the Dovahkin armor. It's a very ornate, uh, it's basically the best armor you get with either mod. It's it's a very ornate armor that adds uh, th this just this really cool armor. Um, it has two uh, Asian dragons on the front and one, you know, Skyrim European dragon on the back. Really cool. Really decorative. The gloves. I'll, I'll show you the armor up close too. It's really cool. And then the helmet. Really ornate with a uh, Asian dragon coming off the top of it, holding a jewel. Cool stuff. And then the shield, the Dovahkin shield etched with dragons on it and then the boots slightly lower res but still pretty cool dragons etched on the, on the coverings and then I will show you the other armors in this uh, in this armor set here let me just find one of my companions because they're wearing one of the sets Indigo! Indigo! Of course they disappear right when I need them. They're really good at that. Skyrim followers, let me tell you. Really good at disappearing when you need them. Here he is. That was weird. Yes, my friend. This is a mod, uh, this companion is a mod too, I might cover him in the future, but he, he's a really cool guy. He says a lot of interesting things. Really uh, livens up your Skyrim experience. But anyway, I'll show you the armor he has on. First off, we have your, uh, your, uh, I, I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, Yore armor. Uh, it's a kind of a toned down uh, version of the, um, of the Dragonborn ar armor, I guess. It doesn't. It's not as ornate, but still pretty cool and has a nice black effect to it. Then we have the blade shield, was it, which is a to toned down version of the Dovahkin shield. I meant uh, Dovahkin when I was saying that before. It's a toned down version of the Dovahkin armor. That's what I mean. Then we have the uh, helmet and the gauntlets. and the uh, boots which look basically the same only they're not as ornate pretty cool stuff and then the, th and then the other armors I have uh, in this dresser here so I'll show you them First off, we have the Ancient Dumaro armor. Uh, this is the helmet for it. Pretty cool. And the boots. And the gauntlets. And if I can find the actual armor here. There we go. And the red armor. This is basically the basic samurai armor. It doesn't have, you know, all the bells and whistles of the other two but it's your basic red armor and it still looks pretty cool then we have the armored uh, 
kimono. There's three forms of this, one in black, one in blue, and one in green. And this is what it looks like on your character. Pretty cool stuff. Now I'm going to show you all the different uh, weapons that this mod adds. First off, we have the most powerful of the bunch, which is the Dovahkin Katana. Which is really ornate, uh, especially in... Uh, um, in the cover of the sword, basically. Uh, I, I forgot the word for that. Oops. But anyway, it, it, in the sheath of the sword, there we go. In the sheath of the sword, it has a interesting design, as well as the dragon katana, which I'll show you here in a minute. They both have interesting designs on the sheath. Then we have the Dovakin Wakajashi, probably not pronouncing that right, which is a slightly smaller sword. There was no Tanto for this, but uh, the, but you have at least the Wakizashi. Also ornate. This is the only Wakizashi uh, in this mod. Uh, the rest are katanas. Ah uh, yes, the dragon katana. This is what the dragon katana looks like. Kind of looks like the Dovakin katana. Then you have a different design on the hilt as well. And for the other uh, katanas, I'll come down here. There are three katanas that I wasn't able to find without console commands. So I'm assuming you can't get these without console commands. They're just called katanas and there's three different forms. Uh, first we have the black form and the red form and the blue form. They're all basically uh they're all basically the same only their uh their uh coloring is different. really cool and of course they'll be even better if you upgrade them using you know ingots and whatever and enchanting them will probably make them quite a bit better than they already are but uh, let me show you uh, one in combat here do 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 This is how you spawn NPCs in Skyrim, was little, I guess, educational thing. You just have to look up their number and put player.placeatme in there and you have the NPC. So let's spawn some bandits. Let's test one of these swords out. Three bandits. And I'm using the Dovakin Katana. Bitch! And looks like Vigilance is coming in to help a bit. As you can see, pretty deadly. And the dog got the last bite in. 
But yeah, they're pretty cool katanas. Real, if if you like being a samurai in Skyrim, you definitely want to download these mods. They're a fantastic way of bringing, you know, a little bit of Japanese culture to Skyrim. So it's pretty fantastic. But that's pretty much all that these uh, mods have to offer at this point. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. The way you get these without the console commands, all of them except for the uh, regular katanas that you can't spawn, is you have to go to this cave right here. And the door was uh, locked without a key when I found it, so I'm not sure if there is a key or not. If there isn't a key, just simply uh, type in unlock on your console commands and then click the door and it should unlock for you. And once you're inside, you have to fight some skeletons and a giant spider, but it's pretty easy overall if you have a companion with you or you're a high enough level above, like, I don't know, say six, you should be fine. But yeah, that's pretty much all these mods have to offer. Uh, if you want to, like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Knows people care about my videos, etc. Knows I'm helps me know that I'm doing a good service for YouTube and the world or whatever the fuck. But anyway, this has been Kingslayer, uh, signing off.